The number one thing I always tell them that the best salespeople many times often are introverts because a lot of people don't want to feel like they're being sold to. So if you are an introvert, you're not talking a lot, you're asking a lot of questions, you're listening, you're basically going to have better results at selling somebody than somebody that's just pitching and talk, 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 doesn't listen. I think number one, it's important to uh, accept rejection. So you have to expect it and accept it, embrace it. Number two is I think you need to um, understand that it's a necessary step to get a yes. Uh -huh. And number three is use it as your chance to practice. So you're getting free practice every time. Well, with successful salespeople, it's not only the level of motivation, it's a level of clarity and persevering. And uh, like mindset is really important. It's like number one for me. But at the same time, you can have the right mindset a bit if you don't have clarity and how you need to execute, then you're not going to be successful. And that's next on Bootstrapping Your Dreams Show. So, the big question is this. How are ambitious people like us, who don't have a lot of resources, did not go to Ivy League colleges, were not born into wealth, how do we become resourceful enough? Use our creativity, our dedication, and a little bit of crazy to bootstrap our way to realizing our dreams. Whether it is launching a new company, launching a new app, or making it to the top of the corporate ladder? That is the question. And this podcast will give you the answers. Hey listeners and viewers, we have created a tremendous community of bootstrappers, entrepreneurs, and professionals who are ambitious, resourceful, and want to get things done. We brainstorm, support, and help each other out. Come join us, navigate to bootstrapping.group. That is bootstrapping dot group if you like this video do not forget to hit that like button now or if you want us to improve our content go ahead and hit the thumbs down button and give us your feedback in the comment section below here at tetra noodle we are passionate about entrepreneurship technology and innovation every week we bring you insightful and engaging interviews tips tricks and strategies to help you grow your business or rise in your corporate profession. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing and do not forget to hit that bell icon so that you are notified when we publish new content. Hello and welcome to this new episode of Bootstrapping Your Dreams Show. I'm your host Manoj Agarwal and today we'll be talking with Rana Kordahi. Rana is based in Australia and she has been working in sales for the past 10 years where she has experience, she has uh, gained experience in recruitment, employment services, real estate, training, and even selling software. And she's now the co-founder of the Selling Academy and Employment Services Training, which has courses, coaching, training, consulting, and workshops to help companies fall in love with sales in the hopes of making their business more successful. Welcome, Rana. Thank you. Well, that's probably the best introduction I've ever had. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll know a lot more about uh, you in this interview because I'm eager to understand how you got into sales because uh, from your LinkedIn profile, it sounded like you wanted to be an actress earlier on in your career. So how did that shift happen? So, yeah, that's true. I studied acting and filmmaking for about three, four years. I spent $40,000 on my acting education. And before that, I was working in retail telemarketing. But then I was making a, um, a film and I needed to get a job as well because now I'm out of a film school, so I had to get a full-time job. And I get a job as a receptionist answering the phone for this guy who had invested hundreds and thousands, probably millions of dollars in these bathroom products that he wanted to sell at pre-construction prices to builders. So he had a nice website. He had uh, That was in the early 2000s. So he probably had a little bit of SEO. He advertised in the newspaper. So he did all the marketing right, but the phone did not ring. So after a month, I was like every day on MSN chatting with my friends, having a great time. Then I started to get bored. And then I thought, let me just get the yellow pages, which is, and then I just looked up all the construction companies around. I started to make cold calls. I probably didn't even know these are cold calls. I was just like, let me call up these people, be naive. I started to speak to builders, spread awareness, uh, set appointments. I started to also go out and cold door knock where I used to um, scout different uh, construction areas that were just building. 
Uh -huh. ask for the construction or the manager or the architect and then a few weeks later I made my first sale of 300,000 because I sold in bulk these wow. vanities and tiles and tops and my boss was like wow because he was actually in China he didn't know I was doing all this stuff uh -huh. uh, yeah so then I became like a few months later sales manager and he grew to a team of like six to twelve people eventually Nice. so that's nice. that's that's my story. Like I didn't really think about this story until probably last year when someone asked me. And then I remembered this story and I was like, oh, that makes sense. Like maybe I've always liked selling. This is something I've always loved to do. That's great. That's a great story. Um, now, uh, you also say that you teach uh, sales to uh, people who are not uh, familiar with sales or non-sales people. So is this uh, related to the story you just shared with us or what is your methodology of teaching sales to non-sales people? So I was working as an employment consultant and in this company, well, I worked in Australia and the UK both. Mm -hmm. And in this organization, you had to help people that were long-term unemployed into work and you had to, um, there were people with disabilities, long career gaps and because I had a lot of sales background, I was like hitting my targets, even tripling my targets. And I had a lot of colleagues that were really struggling. Then I realized like, you know what? They don't, they've don't. they never been trained in sales because you had to pick up the phone, make a lot of cold calls. You had to go out and door knock. You had to do everything selling, but you the only, like I don't want to say product, but you were marketing your services and also you were marketing your job seekers. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the job seekers, you know, they had a lot of disadvantages. So you had to convince an employer, why should they hire somebody that um, was uh, vision impaired or, um, you know, uh, hearing impaired. Mm -hmm. So, uh, or had a huge gap of 10 years. So you had to really, like, selling that um, service and those people, selling people, whether it's, you know, high execs or whatever, mm -hmm. you it's one of the hardest sales jobs. So I created a, they asked me, what is it that you're doing? I then uh, said, this is what I'm doing. I developed my whole sales strategy. Then I ended up getting a job in learning development. I started delivering this course all across the UK. Uh -huh. uh, then I started working in companies like KPMG as a trainer and we were delivering a lot of training to partners, directors, consultants that were sales training. And then also these people, I noticed that they were the types of people that had to go out and network, uh, sell, upsell, but they weren't the typical salespeople. Uh -huh. So then I ended up just from those two experiences developing my online, well, I was delivering it face-to-face, -face, but then deliver, developing the online course called Selling for Non-Salespeople. That's I in see. a nutshell. <laughs> I see, that's great. And then, uh, you know, as you mentioned, sales is uh, somebody, uh, something that requires a lot of cold calling, putting yourself out there, talking to people. Yeah. And a lot of people, especially non-sales people are introverts. They don't wanna, they, they're sort of shy. So how do you, train them to overcome that uh, shyness of theirs and come out of their shell? Well, the number one thing I always tell them that the best salespeople many times often are introverts mm -hmm. because a lot of people don't want to feel like they're being sold to. So if you are an introvert, you're not talking a lot, you're asking a lot of questions, you're listening, you're basically going to have better results at selling somebody than somebody that's just pitching and talk, 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 doesn't listen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I mean but at the same time we have to think about introvert doesn't mean shy because I'm actually an introvert very introverted person uh -huh. so a lot of times I always tell people like yeah just because you're an introvert does not mean that you're a shy person because uh -huh. they're still confident people it's just that their energy gets if they are um, building too many relationships and they have to make a lot of customer calls so that does take a lot of energy like even for me if I had to make a lot of calls in three days and you know have lots of meetings on day four, I cannot see anybody. I cannot just, I have to have a day where, not even on social media, like I can't um, interact. So that's what introvert, I guess, in a sense is. That's a, that's a good analogy. Now, uh, also, uh, one of the things I recently heard are, is that the most successful salespeople, they may not be extroverts or, you know, they may not do a lot of things right, but they are very organized. They have a process to track their leads and, and constantly be in touch with their leads. So do you follow some process like that? Yeah. So at the same time, you could be so motivated, mm -hmm. but if you don't have a process, you won't get any results. So mm -hmm. definitely the process is so important and having a structure. So understanding and having obviously a sales manager that's coaching you, but if you're an entrepreneur, you don't have that luxury. So either get a coach that's going to coach, it doesn't have to be a sales coach. It could just be a coach that's keeping you on track. Mm -hmm. um, and 
having like a cadence approach of the calls that you need to make, the relationships you need to make, the social media posts, the outreach messages. And if you follow, and it's so hard to be honest with you, it's very hard. Even with me, sometimes I just fall off the bed because as an entrepreneur, you're not going to be able to have the luxury like a salesperson because you're doing a lot of other stuff. Yeah, yeah. But if you can just send out five messages a day for an, as an entrepreneur, that's enough. You know, a salesperson might have to send out 30. If that's you can it. get on the phone and speak to four customers a day, that's enough where a salesperson might have to get on the phone and speak to 30, right? I see, I see. As, yeah, as you, you're so right. The structure, the structure right. and having uh, structured activities of what you need to do and clarity of how you need to achieve it. Great. And do you use any software packages or tools uh, like pipe drive or any CRM system for your process? So I use pipe drive. Uh -huh. um, but at the same time, if you've got, say you're an entrepreneur and you do consulting and you just do, you just deal with three to four clients a year uh -huh. and you're uh, prospecting to 20 people in that year uh -huh. and that's all you do. Uh -huh. then maybe you don't need a, um, a CRM. However, if you've got a lot of, high, like for me, I've got a high volume um, sales course, which is selling for non-sales people. Hundreds of people are on that course. I have to keep track of them. But with my consulting, I don't really, um, I might not enter all those into the, my CRM. I see. But I'm pretty, uh, to be honest with you, I'm a pretty disorganized person. So I'm not the like, I, I'm not the best person to um, hold up to like the organ organizing. I and that's see. why I need somebody coaching me and keeping me, holding me accountable as well. I see. All right. And, um, you know, and, and sales jobs, as you said, like, you know, you have to make a lot of calls. You have to uh, talk to a lot of people. So that means a majority of the time you will run into rejection. You will uh, listen to a no lot of no's instead of yeses. Um, so how do you deal with that uh, psychologically, you know, getting uh, over that rejection? I think number one, it's important to... Uh, accept rejection so you have to expect it and accept it embrace it yeah, yeah so once you accept it then you have a paradigm shift and you're like well i accept this i can embrace it number two is i think you need to um understand that it's a necessary step to get a yes uh -huh. and number three is use it as your chance to practice so you're getting free practice every time you pick up the phone you make that call you um have that sales conversation whether it's asking questions overcoming objections saying your pitch, whatever, every day you're going to reach a level of mastery. Um, once you reach a level of mastery, then you're going to feel more confident as well because you would know exactly what questions to ask, how to respond, and you will also uh, be able to um, develop your resilience, um, resilience muscle. Okay, that's great. And do yeah. you ever, um, in your sales training or otherwise, do you ever recommend to record these calls to, to analyze it later on and sort of figure out where things are going wrong and what needs to be improved upon? Yes, 100%. So I have, after my sales training, I have a three-month, it's a three-month program with an action plan blueprint. And I work, some, it depends on the program, but some, sometimes I work with the managers. But in that, um, so I always... Uh, advise the managers that they should be listening in on calls and be it's like a coach you know you can't coach somebody if you're not watching them how they're playing yeah, right yeah, yeah. so you need and also in the action plan i do have one of the act, actions that you have to record yourself with several sales calls and then there's a scale you know how confident it sounded how um i asked questions did i pitch too early uh did i have to overcome objections did i build some form of rapport so, and you, you kind of assess yourself on a scale of one to 10 after you listen to that recording and then you got assess it. how you're going to get better. Got it. Got it. And um, according to you, uh, which one converts better in person sales or online or uh, over the phone? It depends. If you're selling uh, low ticket um, items, uh -huh. which is like $57 to a few hundred dollars, I think uh -huh. online okay. because marketing would be great. Uh, that's just from my experience. So if you run an ad to the right people, you reach the right demographic and it's a really good ad, then people are, uh, can take out their card. Even in B2B, I've had managers take out, I've never made a cold call to sell my $47 webinar ever. Mm -hmm. I might message some of the managers to say the ones that were on my webinar saying, hey, we have another webinar coming up. But sometimes that even takes two. So I run an um, email marketing campaign. The mm -hmm. managers, because they either 
pay from their own card and get it reimbursed. They can afford to do that. But when it comes to a few thousand dollar um, sales, I think it's important to pick up the phone, but also go up. So the phone is not to close a sale on that. It's just to be able to build awareness, um, develop some kind of relationship and gather information about do they have needs, do they have pain points, who makes the decisions, and then try to set an appointment with the right person. I see. I see. And um, you obviously had uh, uh, formal training in uh, acting. So do you think those acting skills helped you in your sales career as well? A hundred percent. So with my acting career, it did help me a lot with my self-confidence. Uh, with my acting training however in my acting training the only thing that was missing like we had a camera theater improvisation um shakespeare whatever but the only thing that was missing from all these modules was mindset training Mm -hmm. and i believe that if we had a module that had to do with personal development and mindset i would have been very successful in us um in acting i see so so let's talk about that you know because i also think mindset is uh very important for any career, any type of uh, success that you're trying to uh, to get in, in your life. So what are your views about mindset? Uh, what kind of mindset you need to develop for success and how do you do it? So with the mindset, I think it's really important. So how I help um, organizations. So when I go in and I want to help them with their selling skills, a lot of times, to be honest with you, it's their mindset. They're scared to pick up the phone. They don't want to go out. And sometimes it's even confident people that just don't want to sell like or don't feel the, that they, can, they, they don't like that rejection. So the number one is when I go in, I really emphasize what the – so number one is what is sales and what is not. So I make it clear that, you know, selling is helping people build relationships. The difference between um, consultative selling and the pushy uh, salesperson, because a lot of times I'm dealing with B2B companies. Once I clarify what sales is, then I get them to become more mission and uh, mission and um, purpose driven and to talk about the impact they're making. So, for example, if you're selling medical equipment, you're making a huge impact uh, on the patients, the doctors. Um, you know, getting um, a diagnosis really early on. So thinking beyond, even when you're selling, you're helping your organization grow, you're creating more jobs because a lot of redundancies end up being made because of either they're not selling or they're not marketing. So yeah, yeah. the impact you're making internally, even the impact you're making for yourself, your family, do you want to go on that holiday? Do you want to have financial freedom? Once, no, so number two is the impact. Number three, and then we then st- start talking about the mindset. So the confidence, the rejection, physiology, thoughts, all this number stuff. And then after number three, and then we start to talk about the skills. So once you mm-hmm. develop the skills, how to overcome objections, how to say your pitch, all this stuff, you de- so that's a mastery part where you, then those four, you have to kind of marry them together and that's when you end up becoming a lot more confident. Got it, got it. And uh, now, uh, what, according to you, um, what makes a good salesperson? Like, you know, you, you talked about mindset, you talked about process, but is there other some other characteristic, common characteristics that you notice in successful salespeople? Well, with successful salespeople, it's not only the level of motivation, it's a level of clarity and persevering. And uh, like mindset is really important. It's like number one for me. But at the same time, you can have the right mindset a bit. If you don't have clarity and how you need to execute, then you're not going to be successful. So I think that it's very hard. I mean, it's very subjective. You ask one person, they're going to tell you sure. um, different than what I'm telling you. So it's quite subjective. Yeah. But from what I've yeah. seen, if I have to choose one skill and it's just one, it has to be confidence. I see. That's like, because if you're not, com- you can start working through confidence on everything else. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, and now uh, you also mentioned uh, marketing and uh, obviously, you know, there's still uh, quite a bit of misconception between what marketing is, what sales is, and a lot of people sort of use it interchangeably. So what are your views about that? So, I mean, I've worked obviously a lot in sales. I didn't understand marketing until I started my own business and I still don't really understand it that well, but from, because I do both, I do marketing and sales, but Marketing is when you're talking to a huge uh, um, amount of people, you're building brand awareness, you're, um, you know, you're pitching, you have a great uh, value proposition, 
where sales is you have to talk to specific people and you have to um, you know ask great questions and discover problems and you have to sell yourself so where marketing is selling more the brand the product the brand awareness they're hiding behind their computer you know nothing wrong with that spamming people uh, sales is picking up the phone and cold calling people so they both bother people one is doing it the pop-up ad the other one is making calls at the same time um, they have different as I said marketing is more like as an overhaul brand strategy creating awareness and sales is when if marketing can do a good job it's gonna make the job of the salesperson easier because when they pick up the phone or they go out they're like yeah we've seen your brand we've seen it on Facebook we've seen it on LinkedIn we um, seen it we've heard about it on the radio with um, you know there's great social proof and then it becomes easier in the sales cycle now what's happening these days because sales has changed a lot of sales people are taking it into their own hands to start marketing whether it's uh, um, personal branding online whether it's writing articles whether it's doing blogs inviting people on their podcasts they are taking it because they're just not depending on marketing they're thinking you know I can market because I'm a business so the great sales people also uh, take marketing into their own hands as well I see. I see. That's great. Um, and now uh, we talked about uh, a lot about sales, but uh, let's uh, quickly talk about employment service training as well. What is that all about? So that's still that's still sales training. Mm -hmm. However, it's a niche market. So as I said, employment consultants who you have welfare in Canada, uh -huh. welfare system. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have welfare. UK, America has a little bit, and um, Saudi has a. So it's people that either lose their job. Uh, unemployed or have disabilities or they're young or their parents and they're different programs to be able to help these people into work now the government gives every provider there's hundreds of providers around Australia they give them a fund um, and they say this is the f we're giving you this fund now do what you need to do with it but your job is to get this job seeker in front of the employer I see. So the provider hires these altruistic people. They're great. They're great at helping people with their motivation, their resume, their uh, job interview techniques. But at the same time, a lot of these, 90% of these employment consultants have to pick up the phone and make cold calls. They have to go out door knock. They have to send emails. They have to use LinkedIn. And 90% of them have never had one day of sales training. So you can imagine the anxiety of them having to get on the phone or market somebody or build those relationships and so I saw the gap because I've worked in this industry and I saw the need and I just um, so employment services was part of the selling Academy but I did separate it because I always believe if you have a niche you're going to have more impact because you're going to talk their language so I've just separated that industry into its own little business its own little company but it's no That's different fine. it's actually sales training I see. Got it. And now, uh, let me ask you this question. It may be uh, unrelated, but um, can these techniques also be used by job seekers themselves? Because at the end of the day, they are also selling their own profile and and you know getting in front of more recruiters, more employers. One hundred percent. And I, in employment services training, we have a course called "How to Sell Yourself to the Employer." Okay. So everything that we've spoken about, from prospecting, getting on. The, I believe the best. A person to get so for me I have a name Rana Kodahi right my if we want to believe in whether I don't know your political if you believe in unconscious bias Rana Kodahi is not a great name for when a recruiter looks at the name they're like yeah. even if it's somebody from my own background an Arab background they're still gonna be like they prefer you know um, Megan Jones that name uh -huh. so when I was looking for jobs I always had to pick up the phone and really build that rapport and my biz, my um, job searching success was because I got on the phone I said I sent my resume and I had a great conversation with them and I sold myself on the phone the next two days I was in an interview in front of them so yeah you have to you have to network you have to know uh, how to build that rapport it, it's it's sales so and that's selling for non sales people yeah yeah yeah. Um, now uh, let's talk about your entrepreneurial journey. So uh, you started your own company. So tell us a little bit about that. Like how how was that experience? Did you run into any issues? Did you make any mistakes earlier on? No, I was perfect. I'm like a multi-billion dollar company now. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, I made a lot of mistakes. So I understood sales really well, mm -hmm. but I didn't understand marketing. 
Uh, so, you know, I did everything well when it came to sales. I did the, all the cold calling. I did lots of door knocking. Um, but I didn't really understand how to price myself. So I actually underpriced myself. And then if you really, if I really thought about it, because I underpriced myself, I couldn't really, so that first year was really horrible. I didn't know about building a database. So I didn't have a database. I didn't have email marketing. I didn't know about, um, I had LinkedIn. I was prospecting on LinkedIn, but I didn't know really about something that, you know, setting up yourself as the authority and Caldini's, um, if you've heard of, you know, Caldini and his um, principles of influence. Uh -huh. So those are so critical to be able to sell more. So I made so many mistakes. I thought it was going to be easy. I just thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to show up, do some training, get paid a few thousand dollars for the day and, you know, do two trainings a month. And that's, that's all I'm going to work. I'm going to work two days a month. Uh -huh. But it turned out that I had to work 80 hours a week yeah, just to, to get those two days. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I was very, I was very naive because I'm very artistic and, you know, I studied acting. So I had no business sense and I'm still learning along the way. Uh -huh. All right. Um, now let's talk about uh, sales targets in, in the sales industry. So I, I've uh, talked to so many salespeople and they're always stressed out about meeting their targets. So um, does this stress actually is counterproductive because as you are getting stressed out, you know, your performance tend to suffer in, in all areas of life. So what are your views about this? So sales is one of the most difficult jobs in the world. And I don't want to blame the manager, but many times if the manager is coming up to you every day saying, you know, did you reach your target? Did you hit quota? Have you made a sale today? And that's the sales conversations I often hear where, because I, as a consultant, I, you know, I've been on the sales floor. I've been a salesperson. Um, I've done a lot of uh, case interviews with a lot of salespeople and if you're asking that question rather than developing that person, having a strategy every two weeks, sit down with that salesperson, think about how they're going to get there. And they always, the, the sales managers, they're usually uh, managing the outcome rather than the process. So that's number one, but we, we don't want to put the whole blame on the salesperson. So number two, yes, stressing out, um, you know, then becoming desperate, sending all these emails where you're trying to push yourself on the customer, stalking the customer, that's also going to be counterproductive. So yeah. then they start to have really, so it affects their mindset and then they stop selling. Yeah, yeah. So I guess in, at the end of the day, not just going to work and thinking, I'm going to just make these calls and whatever happens and I'm going to go with the flow. Routine and structure are so critical for sales success. And I also had to learn this the hard way because I'm not a routine or structure and I still struggle. Like my diary, it really pains me to be able to, to do blocks of time. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to like, I'm going to focus on this for this because I'm, I'm, I start to like, oh, go on the internet, do, um, you know, get on the phone, multitasking and multitasking is not great for sales either. Yeah. So it's just about sitting there, switching off everything and using your blocks of time and having a very clear structure for your cadence activity and multiple prospecting as well. Because some of the sales people that are not selling, let me tell you, they're just depending on one uh, prospecting um, touch point. So some of them are the, yeah, we just do cold calling and that's all we do. And that's all that, that's encouraged. Another type of salesperson is I just want to hide behind LinkedIn and create content and they're going to come to me. Another one is just doing outreach on LinkedIn and spamming people. So another one might be just door knocking all day and spending all day driving around and not even seeing one person that's available to see them and maybe visiting eight different offices. Mm. So unless they have a clear cadence and do it like structure it in a way where they, they break, like I'm going to do this percentage on the phone. I'm going to do this percentage door knocking. I'm going to do this percentage emailing and understanding what works for the industries they are serving, then it's not going to work. I see. I see. So it goes back to the same uh, thing we discussed, which is uh, having a proper process and sort of, you know, uh, making sure it's aligned well with the with the objectives that you're trying to reach. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. And it comes from high above. As I said, every person needs to have um, a, a clear strategy of how they need to achieve their goals. So from management and above, they need to create a tailored plan of how they are going to help their, their, uh, their staff achieve them every person knows needs to know how they need to do things when they need to do things and what they need to do awesome. and having an actual plan like an actual plan for every person which is different sure
Sure, that's well said. Okay, um, now uh, we have a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, professionals, and some aspiring entrepreneurs in the audience as well. So when they're just getting started, obviously, you know, they are very short on budget and they just want to get something done uh, with basically contributing their time or spending very little money. So what are some of the key things that you will advise them to do as they're getting started? My advice is to whatever industry uh, to select two or three domains or niches that you want to serve speak their language because if you're trying say for example you're a sales uh, a personal branding trainer or expert mm -hmm. now how many personal branding experts are there or linkedin trainers yeah many 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 so but if you say i help accountants build the authority online and then you start speaking the, the accountants and their problems and you know well, what's facing accountant why are they not able to build authority online then you're going to be able to speak their language so number one is have a specific niche then if you want to serve everybody once you uh, become so for me I became successful in employment services then I said okay I'm going to do selling for non-sales people and then now I have the selling academy which is a little bit more wider but even yeah. I struggle to sell in selling academy because it's not a very niche and I have to send out other sales trainers who are niche in that company. I see. So number two is get a list of all your ideal clients, um, you know, your ideal clients and get their phone numbers and just pick up the phone and make calls and don't try and sell anything because a call in B2B, high ticket items, if you're an entrepreneur, it's not about selling. It's like, hey, my name is uh, Jonathan. I'm from XYZ. I'm just giving you the... I'm, calling um, accountants in your area to give them the heads up that we're out there. We just launched and I just want to make an introduction. I'm in your area and I would love to meet you if you're available one day or whatever, but do not try and sell. Try and think about how I'm just calling to create awareness because that's the first phone call. Then obviously number three, use uh, LinkedIn, uh, build your authority, create content because entrepreneurs, I didn't know sales people. I'm not too sure about the creating content stuff. Like that's great. Uh -huh. But as an entrepreneur, it's your job to create content and build that authority. It's really, whether it's a blog, a video, whatever it is, um, you know, it doesn't even have to be social media. Some entrepreneurs are actually not on social media and they're on um, medium and they're doing amazing work. Right. So yeah. just choose, choose some uh, avenue online where people look you up and they're like, okay, I know this person. I trust them and I want to buy from them. So that's my three tips. Awesome. That's great. Well, well, this has been a very enlightening conversation about sales. Thank you so much for being with us. Now, before I let you go, can you tell us how people can reach out to you and subscribe to your courses and uh, get trained from you? Okay. So I've got a course called sellingfornonsalespeople.com. You just look that up and it's an online course that you can do. And so that's one way or another way. Just look me up on LinkedIn, Rana Kodahi. Uh -huh. uh, you've got my name there and I think LinkedIn is the easiest way. Just send me a message if you've listened to this so that way when we're connecting I know like who you are because I do have a limit of um, connections at the moment uh, so I am quite careful with you know just connecting with the right people that need wow. need my help. Sounds good. Sounds good. Great. Well thank you so much for being with us today again. And that's all for now until next time and if you're an existing or an aspiring tech entrepreneur then I invite you to check out my new online workshop, Bootstrapping Your Tech Startup Dreams. Go to bootstraptechstartup.com and sign up for free. I want to make sure that more successful and sound decisions are made every day in your tech projects. Let's start finding solutions to your problems. So go to bootstraptechstartup.com and I look forward to helping you with your tech projects. If you want more engaging videos and insightful interviews with industry's thought leaders, then check out other videos we have picked for you. The link is right there. And if you want to be notified about our new content, please do consider subscribing to our channel.